Shalom, brothers and sisters. We're going to go through the scriptures today proving to you who sent the tsunami and who the Japanese are according to the Holy Bible. We're going to prove to you that the Chinese is Moab and that the Japanese is Ammon according to the Holy Bible. Let's go to Genesis 19 and let's start off with verse 30. Okay, there's a lot of things happening in the world today. A lot of you take this Bible for a joke, and the most high ain't playing with nobody upon, upon this earth. Come on, Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. And Lot went up out to Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. Now, Lot was related to Abraham, our forefather. Go ahead, for he fared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave. He and his two daughters. Now, why did they go into a cave? When you read the history from the beginning of chapter 19, the Most High had de just destroyed African cities that were so that was called Sodom and Gomorrah. They were homosexuals. They were fornicating. All bestiality was going on in there. The Most High destroyed them. The only ones that were left alive was Lot and his two daughters, and they fled to a cave. Go ahead. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old. And there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come. Let what does it mean? There's not a man to come in unto us, meaning to have sex with, okay? So that they can bring forth children. Read. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. That's the proof, that we may preserve seed of our father. Now, right now, you're going, ooh, that's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Why, but why, was the, why did they want to have sex with their father? Was it because they were just two nasty work girls? No. They thought everybody on the earth was destroyed. Okay, why did they think that? That's what the Lord led them to believe. Come on. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. So remember, I want you to keep the thought. The reason that they're doing this is to preserve seed of their father. Now remember, what's the name of this book called? Genesis. What does Genesis mean? The beginning. This is the beginning of nations upon the earth. That's what a lot of you don't understand. We get some of the most unlearned, ignorant, dumb emails how could a black woman and a black man bring forth the, the white man called Esau? This is Genesis. This is the beginning of all nations on the earth. Now we're dealing with Moab and Ammon, how they came into the earth, all right? Get your mind right. Read. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the young girl rose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. That's how drunk he was. Read. Thus were both the daughters of... Now remember... He didn't mind getting real drunk. Why? He just saw five whole cities destroyed by fire and brimstone. Imagine that! What that'll do to your mind! Okay, come on. Thus were both daughters of Lot with child by their father. Mm. And the first bare a son and called his name Moab. And the first child had a son and named his name Moab. Moab is the father of the Chinese. We're going to prove that. Read. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. Read. And the younger she also bare a son, and called his name Ben-Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon. So Ben-Ami became, his name was called Ammon. He became the father of the Ammonites. That's the Japanese. Go ahead. Um, it ends was that it? Yeah. So now, when you look at a map, I need all of you to get your Bibles, get your pens and paper, take notes. Look at a map of ancient Israel. Okay, we're going to put it on the screen for you. You can see where Moab and Ammon had an inheritance of land later on. Okay, where was it? In the east, right beneath the land of Israel. Okay, so now, from there, let's go to Ezekiel 25. Because you might ask, well, if they had land inheritance where Israel is, how'd they get way out there in the east? Way far east, how'd they get out there? You're saying they're Chinese and Japanese. Watch, here's the prophecy. Ezekiel 25, let's read 1 through 4. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, 
Set thy face against the Ammonites. Set thy face against who? Set thy face against the Ammonites. Set thy face against the Ammonites. Who are the Ammonites? The Japanese. Come on. And prophesy against them. And say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Hear the word of the Lord God. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God, Because thou saidest, Aha, against my sanctuary when it was profane, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah, when they went into captivity. So now you had the Ammonites speaking against the children of Israel, against the children of Judah, when they went into captivity, saying, aha, they made mockery of us. What verse is that? That was verse 3. We have 4 now. Go ahead. Behold, therefore I will deliver thee to the men of the east. What? Therefore I will deliver thee to the men of the east. Now, stop right there. Pause. Wait a minute. They were already in the east. So what does that mean? Well, God says, I will deliver them to the men of the east. The men of the east was Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. They took them further east. Read that again. Behold, therefore I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession. And they shall set their palaces in thee and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit. They shall drink thy milk. The Babylonians, which were the Ethiopian, they were the ruling empire at this time. They took Ammon into captivity and took them far east. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Now the Lord tells Ezekiel, Now I want you to prophesy against the Moabites, the brothers of the Ammonites. What happens when a father has sex with his daughters? Down syndrome is also called mongoloidism, right. okay? That's when the eyes, you ever see people when their eyes, they, you see some children when they have incest in the family, right. they get what's called Down syndrome. Immediate family members. Immediate family members, right. Because in Genesis 19, when Lot had sex with his daughters, unbeknownst to him, they had children. They had Moab and they had Ammon, okay? Moab is the Chinese, uh, Ammon is the Japanese. What characteristics do those two nations have? They have what is termed mongoloidism, okay? That's what is termed in society. Now remember, I need you to keep your mind clear. You had two races of people, okay? Moab and Ammon, who had mongoloidism. Why did they have mongoloidism? Because they had sex with their father, okay? Lot. Now, remember they had inheritance of land in the, in the east, where the land of Israel is. Now we just read Ezekiel, go back to Ezekiel 25, and I want verse 2 again. Ezekiel 25, verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites, and prophesy against them, and say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidest, Aha, against my sanctuary when it was profane, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity, behold, Therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east. Meaning further east, far east, because they were already in the east. So now stop right there, pause, wait a minute. You got two nations of people who have what's termed mongoloidism. They were moved from the east to the far east, okay? What two nations over in the far east got mongoloidism, huh? It's the Chinese and the Japanese. Jump down to verse 8 now. Verse 8, thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Now he specifies Moab. That's the brother of Ammon. Go ahead. What did they say? Thus saith the Lord God, Because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. They said the house of Judah is like all the heathen. Okay, read. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his city, which are in the frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshemoth. So the Lord was going to remove them from those cities. Come on. Baal Meon and Kiriath Zion, unto the men of the east with the Ammonites. Unto the men of the east with the Ammonites. Remember, they were already in the east. God says, remove them to the men of the east, meaning far east. Read. And will give them in possession that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. Meaning they ain't going to be remembered as Ammon no more. Read. And I will execute judgments upon Moab. Now he says I'm going to execute judgment against Moab because they were two brothers. Go ahead. 
And they shall know that I am the Lord. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Now let's step it up in history a bit. Around the year 1206 AD, there was a famous conqueror named Genghis Khan, okay? And Genghis Khan was not Chinese. Genghis Khan, when you read the history books, it said he was Caucasian. He had red hair and green eyes. All these little pictures you see on the internet, it tells you when you look up Genghis Khan on Wikipedia, all images of Genghis Khan are false, where they show him as a Chinese man. Because they tell you that his empire was from the Caucasus Mountains, all where's the Caucasus Mountains? Russia. The Chinese didn't conquer Russia, okay? Who conquered Russia? It was the so-called white man who started to conquer from the Caucasus Mountains and his empire went throughout Japan and throughout China. That was the so-called white man. He had red hair and green eyes. That's what the textbooks say, okay? And he wasn't no little short guy either, okay? So now, from there, I want to go to Jeremiah 48. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 11. Moab has been as evil. Wait, who are we reading about? Moab. Moab. Who is Moab? The Chinese. Come on. Moab has been at ease. Moab has been at ease. Come from on. his youth. From his youth. From the time he was a nation. And he has settled on his lease. And he's been comfortable. Settled on his lease. Go ahead. And has not been emptied from the vessel to vessel. And he, Moab, God said, has not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Meaning moved from nation to nation. Go ahead. Like the Israelites have been emptied from vessel to vessel. Anytime you open the Bible, what happened to the Israelites? We in captivity here, there, there, that nation, this nation. But it says not Moab. Go ahead. Neither hath he gone into captivity. Come on. Therefore his taste remained in him. Therefore the taste of Moab remained in him. Go ahead. And his scent is not changed. And his scent is not changed. Okay, meaning he's still got that nasty evil spirit. But what is it going into furthermore? You ever look at some Chinese when you look at the uh, people of Cambodia, the people of Thailand, the people of Vietnam, Vietnam. Korea, yeah. a lot of them got a brown complexion. Okay, why is that? Because Moab and, Moab and Ammon originally were all brown-skinned people. What happened? Remember I mentioned Genghis Khan, okay? The so-called white man who came in and took over China, Japan, okay? Okay? And what happened? They got that Caucasian appearance, a lot of them. But many of the Moabites, the Chinese, throughout Vietnam, Korea, Thailand, Cambodia, don't have that Caucasian look. A lot of them, when you look at them, they are somewhat light brown. Okay? What verse was that? That was 11. Jump down to verse 29 and 30. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 29. We have heard the pride of Moab. We have heard the pride of Moab. Are the Chinese a prideful people? You better believe it. Okay? A lot. You got the prime minister of Japan and you had one of the emperors of China that said, if you want to end your criminal problem in America, get rid of all the black people. That's what they said. Come on, read it again. We have heard the pride of Moab. Mm -hmm. He is exceeding proud. He is exceeding proud. Come on. His loftiness and his arrogancy and his pride. Are the Chinese are arrogant and proud people? You better believe it. Read. And the haughtiness of his heart. Mm -hmm. I know his wrath, saith the Lord. God says, I know the wrath of Moab. Read. But it shall not be so. But it shall not be so. His lies shall not so effective. His lies shall not so effective. What are some of the lies Moab, the Chinese, bring forth? They really believe they're going to be the next superpower after America goes down. Because how many of them is it? My billions? Billions. Bill that don't mean nothing to the Most High God. It means nothing. Get Numbers 24. I'm going to show you the prophecy of what's going to happen to Moab, the so-called Chinese of today. Numbers 24, we want verse 16 and 17, the prophecy that Balaam has for them. Numbers chapter 24, verse 16. Mm -hmm. He has said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trap. So Balaam, which who was not an Israelite, he saw the vision of the Most High. He fell into a trance and his eyes were open. Go ahead. But having his eyes open, come on. I shall see him, but not now. He's saying in the spirit, he said, I shall see him. To him is the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah of the tribe of Judah. I shall see him, what? 
I shall see him, but not now. Not now. Go ahead. I shall behold him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. What does the word now mean? It means near. Why won't he behold Christ near? Because Balaam was not an Israelite. He's going to see Christ. Like Christ said, every eye shall see me. Come on. There shall come a star out of Jacob. There shall come a star out of Jacob. The star that shall come from Jacob is the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Come on. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. A king shall come from Israel. This is Christ. Come on. And shall smite the corners of Moab. Shall what? And shall smite the corners of Moab. How many corners is there? Four. Meaning what? He shall smite four parts. The four corners of Moab, okay? So the Chinese ain't going to be the next rulers on earth. God says he's going to smite the corners of Moab. That means four parts of them are going to be destroyed. What happened with Moab and Ammon? Okay, remember, Lot's daughters had sex with Lot. Okay, they had two children, two sons, Moab and Ammon. What characteristics do you get when you have sex with your daddy? Mongoloidism, okay? Then what happened years and years later? They formed nations. What happened to the nation of Moab and the nation of Ammon? God says, I will remove them into possession into the east. Meaning what? Into the men of the far east. That's how they got to what's called today China and Japan. Everybody understand that? Then we went into the history about Genghis Khan conquering them, okay? That's what happened. That's how a lot of them got that complexion they got now. Now, we go going into 2nd Ezra chapter 15. I want verse 46 to 49. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 46. And thou Asia. And thou Asia. Where was Moab and Japan taken? Asia. Okay. That's where they were removed to. The land called Asia. Read it again. And thou Asia that are partaker of the hope of Babylon. Now we mainly, I'm mainly right now going to concentrate on Japan. That's what I want to concentrate on. Ammon, okay? Because a lot of you are sending care packages to Japan. A lot of you black women are crying. You churches are getting to prayer vigils and all that for Japan. Okay, read it again. And now Asia that are partakers of the hope of Babylon. Why is Asia the partaker of the hope of Babylon? Because Asia, I'm talking about Japan right now, only them I'm talking about, they try to mimic and try to be just like Babylon. Who's Babylon here? The United States of America. It's going to prove it as we read down. Go and ahead. art the glory of her person. And art the glory of her person. Come on. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Read that part again. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Now when you look at those nations between Moab and Ammon, which one primarily is trying to be just like America? It's not Moab. It's not China. It's Japan. Amen. Read that again. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Come on. And hast decked thy daughters in order. What do they call them? Geisha girls. Come on. That they might please the glory in thy lovers. Come on. Which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. The Japanese have always desired to commit whoredom with America. When you look at Japanese anime, their cartoons, and they portray themselves, how do they draw themselves? Do they draw themselves like Japanese people? No. They draw themselves with blonde hair, blue eyes, or green eyes. They draw themselves to mimic and look like the American so-called white man. That's how they see themselves. Read that part again. Come on. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please the glory in thy lovers, which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Come on. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. Oh, this is a heavy verse. Read that verse again. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore, saith God. Read the verse again. Go ahead. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her work. Let's pause there. Who is the herd that is hated in all her works? America. America. The United States of America. Read the whole verse again. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. Japan follows everything the United States of America does. Even in their technology. Look at the technology. America will come with something. Japan will far exceed and go above and beyond. Whether it's the cell phone, the internet, building structures, nuclear uh, uh, plants, whatever it is. Read that again. 
Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. And inventions. That's the proof right there. Who has the inventions just like America does? Japan. 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 Go ahead. Therefore saith God. Therefore, therefore saith God. I will send plagues upon thee. Uh-oh. I will send plagues upon thee. What verse is that? 49. Come on. I will send plagues upon thee. Mm. Widowhood. Poverty. Famine. Sword. Pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction. You see what death. that prophecy says? The Most High prophesied through the prophet Ezra. I will send poverty upon you. I will send plagues upon you. I will send destruction upon you. But a lot of you right now, you don't believe this Bible. You in your dilapidated mind think this is a fairy tale. I want you to jump from there. Go to 2nd Ezra chapter 16. We ain't finished with Japan. We ain't finished with Asia. 2nd Ezra 16, let's start at verse 1. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Woe be unto thee Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee Babylon, which is America, and Asia, and Asia. That's Japan. First and foremost, that's what we're dealing with. Come on. Woe be unto thee Egypt and Syria. Woe be unto thee Egypt and Syria. Because Egypt is in the news now. Syria is in the news, but I ain't dealing with them on this lesson. Come on. Gird up yourselves with cause of sack. And here, meaning mourn. God wants these nations to mourn. Come on. Bewail your children. Bewail your children. Read. And be sorry for your destruction. And be sorry for their destruction. Read. Is that hard? Mm -hmm. A sword is sent upon you. Mm -hmm. And who may turn it back? Who can turn, up, turn back the judgment that God sends upon Asia? That God sends upon Japan? Can any of you turn it back? No, you can't turn it back. Come on. A fire is sent among you. And who may quench it? Come on. Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that now they try to quench? Away? Are they trying to quench those nuclear plants over there? Right. And they got water just constantly. Even with the destruction, when we were looking in the newspaper, the fires, they just got to wait for them to burn out. There's no roads for fire trucks to get to them. Exactly. People just got to watch their property burn. Exactly. Read okay. verse 3 and 4 again. A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Come on. Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? Because they think America. They flew fire trucks from America to Japan to try to put the fires out. You can't help them. Right. Understand that. Read. May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? Can you drive away a hungry lion? God says, I want, God wants you to imagine this. You in the woods. And there's a hungry lion who has not eaten in a week. And he sees you. Do you think you can drive that lion away from eating after you? He going to chase you down and eat you. That's how God's judgments are. When God sends a judgment, it's just like that hungry lion. You can't say, no, why don't you go somewhere else and eat something else? Here's a, here's a banana, eat that. He going to eat you. Come on. Or may anyone quench the fire and stubble mm. when it had begun to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer? The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? Who can drive away the plagues God sends? But you know what they're thinking right now? No, 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 my brother. No, brother, because God don't send plagues upon earth. Although you're reading in the Bible, God don't do that. That's what your dumb pork chop preachers have taught you. Read. And the scientists are using the moon got too close to the earth. Yes, that lie. Okay? <laughs> Come on. That's how the <laughs> Come on. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. What verse you at? Verse 9. Come on. A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightning. God shall cast lightning. Come on. And who shall not fear? And who shall not fear? He shall thunder. He shall thunder. And who shall not be afraid? And who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? Now here it come, here it come. The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof. The earth quaketh. And the foundations thereof. Did they just have an earthquake in Asia? Outside, let's get outside. Outside. Outside.
quaking. The earth quaking. The earth quaking, God says. And a lot of you right now, you say, no, 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 that ain't in the Bible. We read the Bible, but you don't believe. Read it again. The earth quaking. Come on. And the foundation thereof. And the foundation thereof. They had an earthquake under the sea. And what is that called? A tsunami. And we're going to show you clips to show you God's wrath. Come on. The earth quaking and the foundation thereof. The sea arises. The what? The sea arises up. Did the sea rise up in Asia and Japan? The sea rose. How high did it get? 30 foot high waves. 30 foot high waves. Oh, but the Bible ain't true, right? Oh, you don't know the Bible. You ain't true. The Bible's the only truth upon this earth. Come on. The sea arises up with waves from the deep. From where? From the deep. That's what a tsunami does. It, the earthquake shakes the ground. It sucks the water. First it pushes the water out, okay? Then when the earth lifts up, it sucks the water right back. You know what they said? They said there was four trains they can't find. That's right. The waves hit those trains. They said, we don't know where the trains go. That's right. They disappeared. Why? Because they were sucked out to sea. And a whole town with thousands of people missing. But the Bible's not true. You black men and black women, you Latin men and Latin women, you better return to this Bible. You better return as the Israelites. Prepare yourself for the second coming of the Lord. You better get your minds right. Come on. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled. And the fish is thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. You see that now from there. Let's go to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29 and verse 6, okay? The Bible's the only thing happening, brothers. All these other philosophies you in, you ain't getting no prophecies from the Quran. You ain't getting no prophecies from the Egyptian book of the dead. The only prophecies that's going to guide you right is the Holy Bible. But you need the right men set up by the Most High to help guide you and show you what this is saying, okay? Isaiah 29 and 6. Isaiah 29 verse 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts. And can you know why that's important? Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts? Because you know what a Negro says? Oh, oh no. God didn't do that. It was harp. The white man got a, a laser beam and it shoots echoes in the earth. See, it's the white man. When they say it's harp, you know what a Negro's really saying? There is no God. That's what you're saying because we're reading what God does. And you're saying, no, it ain't him. You Negroes that got that stupid mindset, you're going to get put to death. So you better repent or get ready to die. Listen good. Okay, read it again. And, and the way how you know them is because they love to throw the word around Illuminati. Right. They want to sound deep, so they keep talking about that. Okay? If you walk in with the Most High, you don't care nothing about no Illuminati. There you go. Okay? They can't stop the Most High what's going down. That's right. Okay? Exactly. Isaiah 29 verse 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts. We with, shall be visited of the Lord of hosts with what? With thunder mm. and with earthquake mm. and great noise. With storm and tempest and flame of devouring fire. Do you hear who's visiting the show? Who struck down Japan? The Lord of heaven and earth. And he used an earthquake. He didn't use nothing called harp. To hell with harp. To hell with the Illuminati. The most high is the divine and ultimate omnipotent power upon the earth. Understand that. Was that it? That's it. That was, go from there. Go to Isaiah 45 and 7. Okay? Because right now you've got the Christian black. That's what I'm going to call them. The Christian Negro black. Black, black. That's going, oh, no, no. Not my God. My God don't do good. My God don't do evil. That's right. God don't do no bad things on the earth. He didn't send a flood that drowned the entire planet. Right. God he killed everybody. That. I guess Women, children, children, and old people. That's right. They, they forgot, forgot that. They forgot, <laughs> they forgot that. Okay? Simple as hell. The flood, I'm glad you mentioned that. God killed everybody on the earth except Noah and his sons and their wives. Then Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed five African cities with fire and brimstone. But right now, you see destruction all throughout the earth. You go, not my God. You black women and black effeminate men and the effeminate Latinos, you better get your mind right. Because you got your mind stuck on that white image of Jesus. That guy don't exist, okay? That's the devil you've been praying to all this time. The God of the Bible is a black God. Understand that. And he's about judgment and vengeance and righteousness. So where you at? Isaiah 45 verse 7. Come on. I form the light. This is what God says. Read it again. I form the light 
and create darkness. And create darkness. I make peace. God makes peace. And create evil. And what? And create evil. No, no, what? And create evil. Not my Jesus. And create evil. Not my God. And create evil. God creates evil. This is what the Bible says. Why ain't Creflo teaching you that? Why ain't T.D. Jakes teaching you that, huh? Why ain't T.D. Or Bishop Eddie Long. Or Bishop okay. Eddie Long. Leave them boys alone and teach the Bible. That's right. Okay. They don't know the Bible. They all about money, about getting paid, okay? Read that again. Tell them where you at. Isaiah 45, verse 7. Mm -hmm. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I, the Lord, do all these things. I, the Lord, do all these things. Did it say heart? I, the Lord, do all these things. Y'all see that? So you black and Latin men that's running around talking about harp and laser beams, shut up! The Lord does these things. You better start giving honor and glory to the Most High God. Okay? From there, let's go to Amos chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Amos chapter 3. Okay? Because we're giving you fair warning from the Most High. We're giving you Bible prophecy. We're telling you what's going on in the earth. Okay? We're the watchmen the Most High has set up. Okay? And, and even like he just said, for you Illuminati warning brothers, how come you can tell everything he's doing, but you can't tell the people what to do against them? We're telling you what to do against what's going down. Serve the Lord. That's right. Okay? Serve the Lord. And now you don't have to worry about no Illuminati. There you go. There you go. Amos 3, verse 6 and 7. Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? The trumpet that we're blowing is the Holy Bible. Come on. And the people not be afraid. And the people not be afraid. You better be afraid because we're giving you warning from the Holy Bible. Come on. Shall there be evil in the city? And there's evil in the city. Look at Japan. There's evil in the city. A lot of them are dead. How many dead? 7,700 bodies they found and another 11,000 they still can't find. There's evil in the city. Okay. And who does this evil? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord hath not done it? The Lord does these things. Come on. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Come on. But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So who are we? Okay. The Most High is revealing his secrets unto us. Okay. Your Christian leaders are not the prophets. They can't go into the Bible and show you nothing. Understand that. You want to know how to get delivered? Repent! Repent! Repent of your sins. Keep the commandments as Israelites. Okay? Then will you be saved. Then will you be delivered. Keep the commandments of the Most High God. Understand that. Was that it? That's it. From there, let's go to Daniel 2.44. And you know what? China ain't going to be the next superpower. Like a lot of you think, China's going to be the next superpower. China ain't going to be the next superpower. Daniel 2 verse 44. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. The days of these kings is talking about when God destroys all the free world. What you call a free world. All the European countries. He's going to destroy China and Japan. Like we read earlier in the book of Numbers. He's going to destroy four corners of Moab. Okay, read it again. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Who is this kingdom? This kingdom is the nation of Israel. The real nation of Israel. So you black men, Latino men, you better get ready. You better put on your boots because God's making us into an army. Come on. Which shall never be destroyed. And this kingdom, our kingdom under Christ shall never be destroyed. Come on. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And the kingdom ain't going to be mixed with other nations. The Chinese ain't going to inherit it. The Japanese ain't going to inherit it. The Ethiopians ain't going to inherit it. The Arabs ain't going to inherit it. And guess what? The white man ain't going to inherit it either. Read that again. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So this kingdom ain't going to be for all nations on the earth. This kingdom is for one nation of people. The nation of Israel. Read. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. What are we going to do with but all the kingdoms? It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Black man, you better get ready. Come out of those dumb pork chop churches. Which your man be yellow makes me sad. <laughs> the hell is this? You black man, you better come out of those Christian churches, all right? We're going to break the nations according to the Bible. This ain't no emotional spiel. This is what the Bible says. Read that again. Lord. 
and it shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Our kingdom shall be shall stand forever. But you know what the problem with the black man? He got that low self-esteem, that effeminate mindset. Oh, I ain't nobody. Oh, I'm just a nigga. I'm a coon. Oh, go ahead. The white man gonna help us. We don't need the white man to help you set up a kingdom, okay? You gonna, we gonna build this kingdom under Christ and it's gonna be a righteous kingdom. Give me that Corinthians. Let's go to the New Testament for all you Christians right now because the black man right now is asking his grandma. Grandma, your grandmama don't know the Bible, okay? First Corinthians 6 and verse 2. This is what the apostle Paul said in the spirit. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? Don't you know black man? That the saints shall judge the world. Wait, wait, wait. Who are the saints? Hold that. Give me Psalms 148, verse 14. Because the black man right now is saying, what well, a white man could be a saint. The Chinese could be a saint. The Japanese can be a saint. Is that according to the Bible? Let's find out. Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. Who? Even of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel are the saints. Get that in your head, black man. You are the saints. But right now, you ain't living like saints. You live, you living like pimps, thugs. Uh, what else they live like? And sing, making up these stupid dances. Every time we turn on the internet, we see a new dumb dance coming up. Some ladies dance together. Um, <laughs> we're new just making mockery of teach me how to duck. <laughs> teach me how to duck. What the hell is going on here? You black men, wars going on all around you, and you coon. <laughs> Chicken in your hand, dancing around. Like effeminate little woman. With tight pants on. You black men, you gotta Shame come out of those churches, all right? Come, whatever you into, come out and come into this Bible and return to your tribes, okay? Read that again. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel are the saints. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Zebulun, Asher, Naphtali. From there, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So, black man, you can judge things. You can judge small matters. God says, don't you know you're going to judge the world? You gotta get your mind right. You ain't gonna get your mind right in the Christian church. You're always gonna be submissive in the Christian church to the white man. Because in the Christian church, black man, where's your image? Who are you in a Christian church? You ain't nobody. You ain't nothing. Your woman don't even respect you. When she go to bed, she don't pray to an image that looks like you. She pray to the image of the man that enslaved you. So you're nobody in the Christian right. church, okay? From there, let's go to Revelation 2. Revelation 2. We're going to nail it with this one here. Because you got the dumb Christian. Oh, I don't know about that. Let me ask. Yeah, who's running to their grandma? <laughs> grandma, is that right? right? Black man, you're the head of the house, black man. You're the head of the nation. Act like it. Revelation 2.25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. What do we have already? We have the commandments of the Most High God. We have the understanding that we're the Israelites. We have the understanding of our tribes, who our forefathers are. Read. And he that overcometh. He that overcomes what? You got to overcome, first, number one, your own personal sins. Then you got to overcome all the wickedness out here in the world. You got to overcome the image of the beast. You got to overcome the beast, which is America, Babylon the Great. You got to overcome all the sin out here in this world. Come on. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. What is Christ's works? The commandments. The commandments. The commandments. If you keep the commandments. To him will I give power over the nations. To him will I give power over the nations. That's what the apostle Paul was telling you. He says, don't you know the saints shall rule the world? You don't understand that because you don't believe that. Because you got low self-esteem. It's been beat out of you. Your courage, you got to get it back, black man. Your spirit, you got to get it back. Come out of those churches. Read it again. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, 
To him will I give power over the nation. And black man, when we rule the nations, both kingdoms of Israel, Judah with Ephraim, under Christ, what we gonna do when we rule? What we gonna do? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. We gonna rule the nations with a rod of iron. What does that mean? We ain't gonna play with the Japanese. We ain't gonna play with the Chinese. We ain't gonna play with the Ethiopians. When the Lord says something, they are gonna obey it or get put to death. That's what they're saying. Read that again. And he that, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Watch this. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shiver. What is that analogy? A potter can take an image of a pot and break it down, okay? He don't like the way it is. We don't like the way the you Japanese and you other nations are living according to the law. You don't want to get right, we're going to break you, okay? Go ahead and mention Buddha in our kingdom. We're going to break you. Go ahead and mention Christmas. Go ahead and mention Kwanzaa. Watch what we do to you nations. Go ahead and mention Allah or Mecca. According to the Bible, we're going to break the nations into submission. Come on. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as a vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Even as I received of my father. Who's the I there? Christ, okay? Even as Christ received of his father, according to Psalms, the second chapter. Was that it? That's it. So brothers, sisters, I pray that you got some understanding out of today's lesson. I pray you had your notebooks open. Rewind the tape, okay? For more information, visit our website, www.israelunite.org. We need your donations, brothers and sisters, to keep this truth going. We got to push this truth throughout the four corners of the earth. So please, send your donations. We can't do this alone, okay? And with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom, Israel. For a copy of this show and all other shows, please visit our website at originalroyalty.com.